Ricky Pierce could go down as one of the best six mans of all time, never complaining about not starting and coming into every game off the bench ready to get buckets, as he was an elite scorer, often leading his teams in scoring coming off the bench. Playing his game with no flash, relying on his jump shot for the majority of his points as it seemed so effortless for him to put the ball in the basket, in particular in the mid-range, he would still extend it to the three-point line on the occasion and be effective as well, and manage to hold his own on the defensive side of the ball, all of which helped Ricky Pierce win two Sixth Man of the Year awards and even became an all-star coming off the bench for the Milwaukee Bucks before being traded to the Seattle Supersonics who were an up-and-coming team behind Sean Kemp and Gary Payton. Yet people forget it was Pierce leading that team in scoring, even as the Sonics went to the Western Conference Finals and were one win short of the finals over its postseason run. Then going on to end his career as a journeyman playing solid minutes as the backup shooting guard wherever he went passing on his knowledge. This is a look back on Ricky Pierce's career. Ricky Pierce was born and raised in the Dallas, Texas area, picking up the game of basketball and playing for Garland High School. Playing well, but not quite at an elite level, correlating and not having many options for college basketball. Pierce would decide to attend Walla Walla Community College in Washington his freshman year to keep playing basketball, which would be tough for him being so far away from home for his first time. However, he played well on the court, catching the eyes of several schools, and ultimately decided to go to Rice to be closer back home in Texas. Ricky Pierce would go on to be a star at Rice right away, leading the team in scoring and rebounding. He was the bright spot on a Rice team over his tenure as the team did not have much success. But Ricky Pierce had tons, with his senior season being the most dominant, averaging 26.8 points and 7.5 rebounds, helping Pierce earn his third first team all Southwest Conference nod and was Southwest Conference's player of the year and made third team All-American for his efforts. Ending his college career at Rice is arguably the best basketball player in school history and after the strong senior season, Pierce was considered a first-round talent entering the NBA draft, with NBA teams wanting his scoring specifically and his mid-range shot ever improving his stock. And in the 1982 NBA draft, with the 18th overall pick, Ricky Pierce was selected by the Detroit Pistons. Pierce was joining a young and up-and-coming Pistons team with the core of Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer, Kelly Trapuka, and Vinnie Johnson. However, Ricky Pierce could not find playing time as rookie year, as the Pistons had Vinnie Johnson and John Long playing in front of him at the shooting guard position, making the choice of taking Pierce in the draft rather questionable, as Ricky Pierce would play in a total of 39 games his rookie season, averaging 2.2 points, as the Pistons went 37-45 and 45 missing the playoffs. In the offseason, the Pistons realized there was not much of an opportunity for Ricky Pierce to play, so they decided to trade him. Ricky Pierce was traded to the San Diego Clippers for two future second round picks that became Jeff Hornacek and Bruce Dalrymple. Pierce was joining a struggling Clippers team headed by Terry Cummings, Norm Nixon, and an oft injured Bill Walton. Ricky Pierce in San Diego started the year coming off the bench as the backup shooting guard, playing well, working himself into the starting lineup for 35 games, with his first start cementing himself in the rotation as he went for 30 points. Pierce this season went on to average 9.9 .9 points and 2 rebounds, as the Clippers remained at the bottom of the league, going 30-52 and 52, missing the playoffs. After another disappointing year for the Clippers, they decided to shake things up with a blockbuster trade that involved Pierce. Ricky Pierce was traded with Terry Cummings and Craig Hodges to the Milwaukee Bucks for Junior Bridgman, Harvey Ketchings, and Marquez Johnson. Pierce had gone from a non-competitor to a Bucks team that was regularly making the playoffs with the core now being Sidney Moncrief, Paul Pressey, and Terry Cummings. Ricky Pierce found himself back to coming off the bench again, backing up Craig Hodges. In the backup role, Pierce put up similar numbers to the season prior, averaging 9.8 points, 2.1 assists, and 2.7 rebounds, though only went for 44 games dealing with injury. Meanwhile, the Bucks looked like one of the best teams in the East, going 59 and 23, making the playoffs as the two seed. Round one, the Bucks faced the Chicago Bulls, led by a rookie by the name of Michael Jordan in Orlando Woolridge. The series saw the one time that someone outscored Michael Jordan in a playoff series, and that someone was Terry Cummings, as he torched the Bulls with the Bucks winning the series comfortably in three games to one behind his play. Round two brought the Philadelphia 76ers, who had a deep and talented team with Julius Irving, Moses Malone, Bobby Jones, Andrew Toney, Maurice Cheeks, and Charles Barkley. Whereas one could guess, the 76ers swept the Bucks out of the playoffs as Malone and Barkley led the way, and the Bucks could not keep up. 
Pierce in his first playoff experience, came off the bench providing a spark, averaging 9.9 points and 2.3 rebounds. Ricky Pierce entering next season earned more playing time, becoming the team's sixth man, increasing his numbers with more time to 13.9 points, 2.2 assists, and 2.9 rebounds, as he would help the Bucks put together another strong season, finishing the year going 57-25, and getting the two seed again. Round one brought the New Jersey Nets with Buck Williams, Otis Birdsong, Mike Jaminski, Albert King, and Daryl Dawkins. The series ended up being rather lopsided though unpredictably as Dawkins could only go for one game and Cummings would carry the Bucks to a sweep. Round two, the Bucks met the 76ers again. This time was different though as Moses Malone and Andrew Toney were out injured, making the Bucks the favorites this go round. But the Bucks found themselves in an early 2-1 hole as Moncrief went out injured and Barkley was becoming a star before their eyes. Needing to get things back on track, Game 4, Ricky Pierce came through off the bench, leading the team in scoring with 19 points to tie the series up. The next two games, the Bucks and the 76ers would split as Barkley and Cummings went back and forth creating a Game 7. Game 7 was neck and neck, and Sedale 3 came off the bench and sparked Philadelphia, who would hold on to the late lead by 1. Milwaukee did have a chance with the ball to win it, where Craig Hodges proceeded to get the look off, which would get goaltended by Charles Barkley giving the Bucks the lead. The 76ers still had enough time to respond with one final look, but Dr. J missed the open shot, and the Bucks, after many years, had finally made it past the 76ers in the playoffs. The Bucks in the Eastern Conference Finals faced the Boston Celtics, headed by Larry Bird, Kevin McHale, Dennis Johnson, and Robert Parrish. Over the series, Larry Bird proceeded to put on a clinic against the Bucks, as they had no answers in stopping him, ending the series with the Bucks getting swept. Over the playoffs, Ricky Pierce played a slightly less minutes as Craig Hodges was playing well, with Pierce going on to average 11.1 points, 2.8 rebounds in his six-man role. In the offseason, the Bucks, knowing they were close to competing for a championship, had traded for Jack Sigma to help the team have a bona fide big man. Next season, Ricky Pierce was still playing a six-man role, but would get more minutes and touches within the offense, as Sidney Moncrief was battling injuries. Pierce off the bench became the team's second leading scorer, averaging 19.5 points to go along with 3.5 rebounds, scoring rather efficiently when giving his opportunity, with the NBA recognizing Ricky Pierce with the Sixth Man of the Year award. Ricky Pierce had helped the Bucks stay afloat as they had missed Moncrief, going 50-32, making the playoffs the four seed. Round 1 brought another matchup in the playoffs against the Philadelphia 76ers, who no longer had Moses Malone. Just like the years prior, the series would be a back and forth one as Cummings and Barkley were trading blows, with the series being tied up heading into Game 5, where the Bucks would finally create separation playing a well-balanced team game winning the game and the series. With Ricky Pierce's best individual game of the series being Game 2 as he led the Bucks in scoring with 24 points. Round 2, the Milwaukee Bucks met the team who had sent them home the year prior in the Celtics, and things initially looked like they were going to go similar to last year as the Celtics jumped out to a 2-0 start with Bird being Bird, before Ricky Pierce Game 3 provided instant offense off the bench going for 29 points pushing the Bucks to a victory. Game 4, the Bucks would be trailing late in a close one as Bird had gone for 42 points. Yet they still had a chance to win it late before John Lucas would fumble the ball around on the final possession and miss the game winner going down 3-1. The Bucks, with their backs against the wall again would surprisingly rally as Sidney Moncrief no longer looked like he was dealing with injuries as he carried the Bucks to two straight victories, forcing a Game 7. In Game 7 though, the magic would run out and Larry Bird would put away the Bucks, finishing off the series four games to three. Ricky Pierce this postseason played a smaller role as Moncrief returned, but still played well in that role, averaging 15.9 points and 2.3 rebounds to the team's sixth man. Next season, the Bucks looked to bounce back with a healthy season from its players, but Moncrief again would get hit by the injury bug, and Pierce would as well. Ricky Pierce played in a total of 37 games, averaging 16.4 points, 2.2 rebounds, and 2 assists. The Bucks with the injury problems still remain semi-competitive, with Cummings and Sigma leading the team to a 42-40 record in a playoff berth as the 5 seed. Fortunately for the Bucks, both Moncrief and Pierce would be healthy enough to go for the playoffs, as the Bucks met Dominique Wilkins, Kevin Willis, and the Atlanta Hawks round 1. The Hawks jumped out to a 2-0 series lead, winning their home games as Wilkins was killing the Bucks. 
You know, when the series went back to Milwaukee, Wilkins' supporting cast just disappeared, and the duo of Sigma and Cummings took advantage, tying the series up, forcing a Game 5, which was back in Atlanta where Dominique continued his strong form, and the Bucks went cold when it mattered most, getting sent home. A part of the reason for the Bucks' early exit was Ricky Pierce, as he was not fully back, averaging 11.8 points and 2.8 rebounds. Next season, Pierce was back and healthy, thriving in his six-man role again, being second on the team and scoring with 17.6 points, as well as averaging 2.1 assists and 2.6 rebounds, helping the Bucks go 49-33 and making the playoffs to the five seed again as Moncrief and Pressy missed time with injury. The first round, the Bucks met the Atlanta Hawks again, who are missing Kevin Willis this time with injury, yet had improved since the last playoff matchup, adding Moses Malone. The Bucks would drop Game 1 as Pierce struggled shooting from the floor, but he would bounce back strong Game 2, going for 20 points, helping the Bucks tie the series up. Ricky Pierce only elevated his play Game 3, going for 35 points, leading the Bucks to another victory, and one win away from Round 2. Game 4 in Milwaukee, it was thought the Bucks would close the series out, but early into the game, Terry Cummings would go down with an injury, having to miss the rest of the postseason, resulting in a loss in the series headed back to Atlanta. The Bucks looking down and out, missing Cummings, would actually go on to shock the Hawks in Game 5 behind Ricky Pierce as he led the way with 25 points sending the Bucks into Round 2, which brought Pierce's former team in the bad boy Detroit Pistons with Isaiah Thomas, Bill Lambeer, Joe Dumars, Mark Aguirre, Vinny Johnson, and Dennis Rodman. Ricky Pierce continued his strong form from the series prior, but the Bucks severely missed Cummings getting swept after the Pistons put together a well-rounded team performance. Ricky Pierce was the go-to guy for the Bucks this postseason, averaging 22.3 points and 2.8 assists and 2.8 rebounds, while leading the postseason as well in three-point field goal percentage at 75%. In the offseason, Sidney Moncrief left in free agency, and the Bucks took it as a sign to rebuild the team, trading away Terry Cummings in the offseason as well for Alvin Robertson. Ricky Pierce's role did not change, as he would still come off the bench, yet when he came in there, there was an even more of an opportunity to score. Ricky Pierce went on to lead the Bucks, even though he was coming off the bench and scoring, averaging 23 points, 2.8 rebounds, and 2.3 assists, earning Pierce's second Six Man of the Year award. Ricky Pierce had also set his career high this season as he went for 45 points against the Sacramento Kings. Pierce at the helm guided the Bucks to a 44-38 record, making the playoffs as the sixth seed, meeting the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Horace Grant round one. Michael Jordan would be Michael Jordan this series, sending the Bucks home rather quickly, three games to one as he was impossible to stop. Ricky Pierce put together a strong series despite the quick exit, averaging 22.3 points, 2.3 rebounds, trying his best to keep the Bucks in it. Pierce next season continued his strong form, averaging 22.5 points, 2.1 assists, and 2.3 rebounds to start the season, leading the Bucks off the bench, who were a playoff caliber team, which would be enough for Pierce to earn his first All-Star appearance, even though he was not a starter on his own team. Though Pierce, not long after the All-Star game, found himself on the move being traded away. Ricky Pierce was traded by the Bucks to the Seattle Supersonics for Dale Ellis, as the Sonics were wanting to offload the head case that was Ellis, and wanted an equally solid player with no off-the-court issues. Pierce was joining an up-and-coming Sonics team with its young core of Sean Kemp, Gary Payton, and Derek McKee, while also having a key veteran in Eddie Johnson. Ricky Pierce, funnily enough, found himself coming off the bench again, finishing the year leading the team in scoring, averaging 17.5 points, as well as putting up 2.3 assists and 2.3 rebounds in his time in Seattle this season. Pierce in Seattle would also pick up his famous nickname this season in Big Paper Daddy from the fact that he won a number of half-court shot contests in practice, which had some cash rewards. Ricky Pierce thriving in Seattle would help the Sonics finish the year at 41-41, and sneaking into the playoffs the 8th seed, to meet the Portland Trail Blazers round 1 with Clyde Drexler, Terry Porter, Jerome Kersey, Clifford Robinson, Buck Williams, and Kevin Duckworth. Portland jumped out to a 2-0 series lead thanks to Drexler. Seattle retaliated Game 3, winning late in a shot from Sedell 3, and winning Game 4 as Eddie Johnson was hot for Seattle tying the series up. Game 5, Portland would survive the upset attempt from Seattle as they took an early lead with Porter leading the team to a victory. Ricky Pierce over the series took on a lesser role as Eddie Johnson and Sedale 3 were hot, reducing his playing time, 
so Pierce's average followed to 11.4 points and 2.8 rebounds. Next season, for the first time in Ricky Pierce's career, he would actually step into the starting lineup full time, and there would be no drop off in production as they led the Sonics in scoring again at 21.7 points per game while also averaging a career high in assists and rebounds with 3.1 and 3. This season, Pierce also hit 75 consecutive free throws, which was the second longest streak at the time in NBA history, as he was always a high and elite level free throw shooter throughout his entire career. With Ricky Pierce heading the charge, the Sonics improved going 47-35, making the playoffs the sixth seed. Round 1, the Sonics matched up against the Golden State Warriors with Chris Mullen, Tim Hardaway, and Sarunas Marcellonis. The Sonics would steal Game 1 on the road as Ricky Pierce went for 28 points, leading the Sonics to a victory. The Warriors would take the next game in Cali before the series shifted to Seattle and would never go back as the Sonics went on to win two tightly contested games as Sean Kemp was becoming a star player this series and Ricky Pierce was providing the scoring punch, having 21 points game 3 and a game leading 27 points game 4. Sending the Sonics into round 2 to face the Utah Jazz with Carl Malone, John Stockton, Jeff Malone, and Mark Eaton. Both the Malones for Utah torched the Sonics this series, seeing the Jazz win comfortably four games to one. The one win the Sonics did get was because of Pierce as he went for 31 points. The Sonics, despite getting handled by Utah, showed promise this postseason upsetting the Warriors and the young core behind Kemp was ever improving. All the while, Ricky Pierce was a bucket, leading the way with 19.6 points to go along with 3.1 assists and 2.4 rebounds over the postseason. The following season, Sean Kemp kept improving and so did the team. With the team improving and competing, the Sonics would trade for Sam Perkins to bolster the playoff run. Pierce was still in a starting role and leading the team in scoring again, but saw a dip in numbers as the team around him was improving, as Ricky Pierce averaged 18.2 points, 2.9 assists, and 2.5 rebounds. The Sonics on the year would go 55-27, and earning the three seed looking like a true contender. Round 1 brought the team who had sent Seattle home the prior year in the Utah Jazz. Carl Malone and Sean Kemp battled through the early parts of the series, being tied up after four games with neither team being able to separate themselves. In Game 5, the Jazz looked in control, headed into half, as they held the Sonics to 30 points. The second half was an entirely different tale though, as the Sonics caught fire from the floor, rallying behind the home crowd to win the game and the series. Round 2, the Sonics faced the Houston Rockets with Akeem Olajuwon and Otis Thorpe. The Sonics jumped out to a 2-0 series lead as Ricky Pierce got the Sonics off and rolling Game 1 with a team-high 23 points. When the series shifted to Houston, the Rockets won both of their home games behind big games from its star players. Game 5, back in Seattle, the Sonics blew out the Rockets behind Ricky Pierce's 24 points. Game 6 in Houston saw the Rockets win, continuing the theme of the home team winning creating a Game 7, where the Sonics found themselves holding the lead late in the game as Ricky Pierce had gone for a game-high 25 points. The Rockets would have a chance late to tie things up before ultimately losing it as Elijah Wan missed the three-point shot sending the Sonics into the Conference Finals, meaning the Phoenix Suns led by Charles Barkley, Dan Marley, Kevin Johnson, and Tom Chambers. The Sonics dropped Game 1 before bouncing back behind Ricky Pierce's game-high 34 points tying the series up. Ricky Pierce continued his form into Game 3, leading the game and scoring again with 28 points. This time, however, it would be in a loss as the Suns got good production from its bench winning the game. The Sonics and Suns proceeded to split the next two games with Barkley and Kemp leading both victories. In Game 6, looking to avoid elimination, the Sonics survived another day as Ricky Pierce came through again with a game-high 27 points, forcing a Game 7. However, Game 7 was more lopsided as Charles Barkley put together one of his best performances over his career, sending the Sonics home. Ricky Pierce over the run to the Western Conference Finals was the Sonics' leading scorer and second best player on the floor behind Kemp, as Pierce averaged 17.7 .7 points, 2.4 rebounds, 2.2 assists for a Sonics team that fell one game short of a Finals appearance. After the postseason run, the Sonics knew they were headed in the right direction, and would try to improve the team trading away Derek McKee for Detlef Shrimp and made a separate move trading Eddie Johnson and Dana Barros for Kendall Gill. The addition meant Ricky Pierce was back to his bench role, seeing a dip in his numbers to 14.5 points, 1.6 rebounds, and 1.8 assists. 
Pierce also started to battle injuries at this time, only going for 51 games. Though Ricky Pierce missed time with injury, the Sonics did not slow down thanks to the offseason acquisitions and Gary Payton developing into an all-star caliber player, going 63-19 making the playoffs as the one seed. Round 1, the Sonics matched up against the 8-seeded Denver Nuggets, who had Dikembe Mutombo, Lafonso Ellis, and Mahmoud abdul Rauf. The Sonics jumped out in a commanding fashion, taking a 2-0 series lead looking as though they were going to sweep the Nuggets out of the playoffs. The series shifting to Denver took a turn game 3 as the Nuggets rode Reggie Williams and Mutombo to a victory, giving the Nuggets confidence. The Sonics game 4 were in a dogfight with the rejuvenated Nuggets going back and forth but held the lead late, looking like they were going to finish the Nuggets off before Robert Peck came through hitting a game-tying 3 forcing overtime, where the Nuggets in overtime rode Lafonso Ellis to victory tying the series up, forcing a game 5 back in Seattle. Game 5 was another nail-biter as the Nuggets matched everything the Sonics threw at them where the Sonics would almost lose in regulation if it was not for a late basket from Guild of Force overtime. And like the prior game, the Nuggets separated themselves in overtime, stunning the one-seeded Sonics round one. The Seattle Supersonics became the first one-seed in NBA history to lose to an eight-seed round one. Ricky Pierce not 100% over the series coming off injury saw his minutes cut and only averaged eight points and one rebound. The Sonics, after the strong regular season while not having Pierce for most of it, decided to move on from the aging guard. Ricky Pierce was traded by the Seattle Supersonics with Carlos Rogers and two future picks that became Martin Lewis and Michael McDonald to the Golden State Warriors for Byron Houston and Serenus Marcellonis. Pierce was joining a Warriors team that was looking to go back to the playoffs for the second year in a row behind Tim Hardaway, Chris Mullen, and Latrell Sprewell. Ricky Pierce's role was to come off the bench again and provide instant offense. However, his season would be injury riddled, battling back and foot issues on and off, only suiting up for 27 games as he averaged 12.5 points and 2.4 rebounds when he was healthy. Pierce was not the only Warrior this season to deal with injuries, as Mullen also missed time. And without Mullen and Pierce, the Warriors struggled to meet expectations, going 26 and 56, missing the playoffs. In the offseason, Ricky Pierce was a free agent, and he would go on to sign for the Indiana Pacers. Pierce was joining a Pacers team coming off a conference finals appearance looking to take the next step with Reggie Miller, Dale Davis, Mark Jackson, Rick Smith, and Antonio Davis. Ricky Pierce was healthy again this year and became the Pacers backup shooting guard to Miller, averaging 9.7 points and 1.8 rebounds. For a Pacers team playing well as Rick Smith missed a couple of games, finishing the season going 52-30, getting a 3 seed, meaning the Atlanta Hawks round 1 with Steve Smith, Mucky Blaylock, and Christian Leitner. The Pacers normally would have entered the series as favorites, but Reggie Miller was out with an eye injury, pushing Ricky Pierce into the starting lineup. Steve Smith elevated his play this series smelling blood in the water with Miller out, forcing the series to go to a Game 5. And with the season on the line, Reggie Miller returned for Game 5. Reggie Miller proceeded to play great, not seeming to be bothered by the injury, but the Hawks still hanged around and held the lead throughout, finishing the Pacers off as Reggie Miller missed the buzzer beater. The Pacers were upset and stunned Round 1. Ricky Pierce over the series starting played solidly, but was no Reggie Miller as Pierce averaged 10.2 points and 3 assists. In the offseason after the early exit, the Pacers would decide to mix things up with a trade involving Pierce. Ricky Pierce was traded by the Indiana Pacers with Mark Jackson and a future pick that became Ethmus Rencius to the Denver Nuggets for Jalen Rose, Reggie Williams, and a future pick that became Eric Dampier. Pierce was joining a Nuggets team with playoff hopes with the core of Antonio McDice, Lafonso Ellis, Mark Jackson, and Dale Ellis. Ricky Pierce was playing better than the year prior in his backup shooting guard role in Denver. However, the team was not finding his personal success that he was, as they were struggling with the Nuggets not competing and Pierce getting up there in age the Denver Nuggets decided to trade him away mid-season. Ricky Pierce was traded by the Denver Nuggets to the Charlotte Hornets for Anthony Goldwire and George Zidick. Pierce found himself on a playoff caliber Hornets team led by Glenn Rice, Anthony Mason, Lade Divac, Muggsy Bogues, and Del Curry. 
Ricky Pierce again became the backup shooting guard in Charlotte, this time for Curry, even earning six-man minutes again, finishing the season averaging 11 points and two rebounds between Denver and Charlotte. As Pierce played his part in helping the Hornets finish the season strong, going 54-28 making the playoffs as the sixth seed, getting a series against the New York Knicks with Patrick Ewing, Charles Oakley, Larry Johnson, John Starks, and Allen Houston. Larry Johnson provided the spark this series for the Knicks as he was wanting to punish his former team, helping the Knicks sweep the Hornets out of the playoffs, as the Knicks played a well-rounded team series with Ewing being the main anchor. Over the series, Pierce picked up a pair of starts, going on to average 7.7 .7 points and 2.7 rebounds, playing solid in his time. In the offseason, the Hornets wanted to go younger though, and they decided to release Ricky Pierce. As a free agent and no NBA team calling, Ricky Pierce decided to go play overseas for AEK BC Athens in the Greek League. However, he would only suit up for five games before an NBA team came a calling, and that team was the Milwaukee Bucks. Ricky Pierce was joining the Bucks for his second go round as they were looking like a playoff competitor behind Glenn Robinson, Ray Allen, and Terrell Brandon. Pierce would play the veteran role at the end of the bench, passing on his knowledge to the youth as Milwaukee always knew he was a good influence. Ricky Pierce on the court played a limited role, averaging 3.9 points in 39 games. On the downside for Pierce, when he had initially joined the Bucks had looked like a playoff team, but Robinson and Brandon suffered injuries, hurting the team down the stretch of the year, and they would finish the season going 36 and 46, missing the playoffs. After the season, Ricky Pierce realized his time had come and decided to call it a career and retire. Ricky Pierce, over 16 years in the NBA, averaged 14.9 points, 2.4 rebounds, and 1.9 assists. Pierce, after his playing career, continued to have an impact on the game of basketball, developing his own basketball that assists with shooting accuracy, in particular with a design fingertip placement on the basketball called the Aku Shot 22 for kids learning how to shoot with proper form. Ricky Pierce, though, will be remembered most as his play on the court and being the perfect sixth man, providing no complaints about not starting. Coming into every game ready off the bench, providing instant offense, relying on his pure shots specifically in the mid-range, though he had a three as well, extending it to there occasionally. Winning Pierce two six man of the year awards while with the Bucks, and even became an all-star as he was leading his team from coming off the bench and scoring in Milwaukee, before heading to Seattle where he thrived with its young up and coming core, being the team's leading scorer as they went to the Western Conference Finals and fell one game short of a finals appearance. Then ending his career as a journeyman, bouncing around, providing solid minutes off the bench wherever he went. And to put his career simply, his jump shot was just flat out great. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video on Ricky Pierce's career. If you want to see any other videos about any other random players in the future, leave them in the comments below and I may or may not decide to do them. Who knows? Thanks again for watching. This has been Skid Denver.